Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Winter Window and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Cabernet. And if you do enjoy this video, I encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel and to also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Okay, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch, along, switch up the size a little bit, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown. I have Mars black, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, fire red, ultramarine blue, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat synthetic brush. And then I have a number five round synthetic brush as well. And during the painting process, I will refer to these as small, medium, and large. And of course you can switch up the size of those if you'd like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, let's see, if you're going to be painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same colors of paint and brushes and stuff. So that's down in the video description. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can just print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our wall. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And you can really have this any tone of grayish brown that you want. It's totally a visual preference on your part. But I'm gonna have mine darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. And before I start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself kind of a, a bottom to the wall so I know how far down my canvas I wanna go because I'm gonna start at the top. So I'm gonna put all three colors on my brush at the same time. I have a little bit of white, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of black. I'm not using very much white. I'm just really utilizing the white so I can get my wall to be a little bit lighter at the bottom and also to have a soft look to it and the white will help you to do that. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a marker on the left hand side of my canvas that's gonna be a little bit below my halfway point. So visually this is about my halfway point for me. I'm gonna go maybe about an inch, inch and a half down below that, make myself a mark. Then I will use my brush as a measuring tool, put my finger there, go over onto the other side and make myself a mark at about the same level. And then I'm just gonna kind of connect these two with a really loose line. I'm not terribly concerned about this being a perfect line at this, po at this point. Then I'm gonna start up at the top of my canvas using a left to right brush stroke. I'm gonna be using more black and brown at the top of my wall. And as I come down the wall towards um, the base of it, that's when I'll start picking up a little bit more of the white to make it lighter as it comes down towards the base of that wall. Right now, I, I started picking up at the top black and brown. Now I've just got, I picked up brown for my next uh, reload of my brush. And I'm using a good amount of paint and I am not using much pressure on my brush. So that way, I just added a little bit of white, black, and brown to my brush. That way it ends up nice and thick and I can keep it wet and keep blending it to get this nice blend to happen. And I'm not terribly concerned if this blend is super perfect. What I am concerned about is just a nice 
even coat throughout my canvas. So some of you might want to do two layers on this. Some of you might want, you know, maybe that first layer works out just fine for you. But you'll find I continue as I go through this process to go back and forth. And sometimes I go back up into a previous section, but I am using a good amount of paint. And again, I'm reloading most as I'm getting down towards the bottom of the wall, more with brown and white. But again, you can make yours as light or as dark as you want, as brown or as gray as you want. Maybe you make this to look like a color of a wall in your house. So you can really make it customized to your liking. But I'm putting it lighter at the bottom of the wall, almost to insinuate, or not insinuate, but it's casting kind of the glow from the fireplace. The, fi the fireplace is gonna be our light source for the painting. So the fireplace is down close to the ground. So that's gonna make it make sense that the bottom of the wall is the lightest. And you can see, I just keep going back and forth. Sometimes if you want a, a really great blend while the paint is still wet, you can almost pull your paint kind of in a diagonal way if you want, if it's still wet and then back left to right, that will help to really get those colors to blend nice and well. And then when you get done with this step, we are gonna be utilizing that same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the floor. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, rust, red, and yellow, so no blue or white. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my brightest area, which is gonna be with yellow, and it's gonna be the area that's being highlighted by the fireplace. But you don't know where the fireplace is yet, so I have to tell you where that is. And I want this floor to look like it's a wood floor and that it has some dimension, so it's gonna be going farther away towards the top of the, of the uh, floor area. My fireplace is going to be to the left of my center. So I'm going to have a window um, pane or sill going kind of down the center of my canvas and one over here. So my fireplace is going to be around this area. That's where the lightest part from the, the fireplace should be coming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with yellow paint on my brush and where my fireplace, where I think the center is gonna be, I'm gonna take my yellow paint and I'm going to be making almost like a, a splay of it coming out. So it's gonna be more narrow up at the top and then it's gonna kind of get wider down at the bottom. I'm not terribly concerned how perfect it is up at the top right yet because we're gonna be adding uh, some some darker colors up there in a second. But what I'm really looking to do is just get this really vibrant area to come out from the fireplace. This yellow, or any yellow for that matter, will not be this bright if it's on top of any other color. So I know that I have to put this yellow down first and build other colors on top of it. And if I want little streaks of this yellow throughout the rest of my floor, I can certainly pop in a couple of other brighter streaks like this. All of my wood boards, my floorboards, are gonna be coming out from this top edge, but I want them to look like they're getting closer to us, so I want them to kind of be wider at the bottom. So I've got a bunch of yellow on there. The next color that I'm gonna uh, put on my floor is a touch of red. So I put a little bit of red on my brush. I did not wash my brush. My fireplace is gonna be what's casting my red kind of highlights or glow. So I'm putting a touch of it within that initial yellow type area and then I will put a little bit of it going out throughout the rest of the floor, but again, it's concentrated the most by the fireplace. So something like that. Then the next color I'm gonna pick up without washing my brush is the burnt sienna or rust color. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing, just putting a couple of little streaks, but I don't wanna overpower 
this yellow area. I still want that to be the brightest area of them all. So I know that this rust color, I do want to incorporate a lot of it throughout the rest of my floor. So I'm going to just make these diagonal type marks, bringing some of them towards the top of my wall or the bottom of my wall, the top of my floor or the back of my floor, <laughs> get it right. Um, and so just making sure I've got some of that in through there and maybe the angle gets a little bit more dramatic down at the bottom. I'm gonna get some over here on this side as well. And you can see I'm not coloring in 100%. I'm really just getting these streaks going to try and emulate the streaks from a wood floor, but I don't wanna take or get rid of a lot of this bright yellow, but I do want it to look you know, more on the, on the stripey side and less on the wobbly side. So I will redirect some of these marks as they're, as they're drying so they look nice and uniform kind of. Now the next color I'm picking up is brown without washing my brush. I'm not gonna put a ton of brown in that yellow area. Right now I'm just gonna kind of streak it through where I see that there's some vacant spots throughout the rest of my floor. So something like this. And again, I, I really just want a nice full coverage, but I, I'm trying not to over blend this paint. This is more of like a impressionistic type painting. It's not necessarily meant to resemble a, a photorealistic image, but we do want to try and have some sort of realistic or representational type marks and stuff. So I'm just making sure that I have these varying colors throughout it. And then once I've got the majority of this done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna get that top area to be the darkest. So I just put a little bit of black paint on my brush and when I do the black, I'm gonna go a little bit slower. So I'm gonna get a touch of black up in through here and then what I'm gonna do is while it's still wet, I'm gonna pull it into the floorboards that are next to it. Just making sure that I get all the way up to the edge of that wall. And I will even do a little bit in that glowy area as well. So you'll see how I'm gonna do that. But I am just slowly going through this section, making sure I've got all of the areas painted and you can see it's creating this beautiful wood type faux faux wood type texture to it and as you get into the yellow area sometimes if, if your yellow is still wet and you're working with black sometimes that will turn almost like a greenish color depending on the type of paint that you're using so if yours ends up a little bit on the greener side where it is in that yellow you can always if you don't like it you can adjust it with any of your other colors but I would just kind of focus in on getting this dark area on here first. And then if you need to do any adjusting after that, feel free to do so. So again, I'm just adding a little bit of black up where it meets that wall. And then I'll just lightly pull my black paint into those floorboards in the direction that the rest of them were traveling. And you can put little streaks of black throughout the rest. So if you've got some little vacant areas throughout the rest, go ahead and put a couple of little black marks and have fun with this. Maybe maybe you want yours to be more of, you know, that chestnutty reddish tone or maybe you like the golden like oak tone of the floor. So feel free to make it whatever wood grain color you would like. And then I'm going to just kind of finish this off here coming all the way over to the right and before I'm done I will kind of step back or, or put my head back a little bit just to make sure my my floorboards look like they're going in the correct direction sometimes if you're not careful they might end up looking a little wobbly so I'm just going to kind of as I as I'm doing this just make sure that I've got them directed we're going to have a whole bunch of other details on this painting so if they're not perfect don't worry about it but if you can get them to kind of look you know not super wobbly that's great even your your wall line where it meets your wall that doesn't have to be perfect either you can almost if you want to get it to blend in a little bit with the wall behind it 
and have a soft transition line, sometimes that helps to give the, uh, you know, uh, the illusion of it being straight, even if it's not, even if it's got a little bit of a wobble to it, no worries. You, if you soften it up a little bit and make it less of a distinct line, so to speak, that will help um, it visually look a little bit straighter. And I'm pretty happy with that. So again, you can certainly keep fiddling with yours if you want to, but I am gonna be going on to the next step with my medium flat brush. So when you get this all nice and done, you've got full coverage on your floor. You can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our window frame. But before we do this step, I do wanna kind of forewarn you that you're gonna to wanna to have your canvas dry. So if it's not already dry, you can just, you know, take a little bit extra long of a break. Or you could blow on it if you'd like to, which might take you all day. Or you could just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it. But maybe yours is dry at this point, but if it's not, you definitely wanna have some kind of method to get it there. So how I'm gonna be doing my window frame is I'm gonna be using my medium brush, which is the smaller flat brush that you have. And I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself like a creamy brown color on the, on the grayer side. So a creamy brownish, gray, brownish gray kind of color. Um, I want this to be the exterior color of my house and of course you can certainly have yours any color that you want to, but I'm gonna do mine just like a creamy gray color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a lot of my brown and I'm going to be mixing in just a touch of my white and just a teeny tiny touch of my black. And I want this to be lighter than my wall. So maybe a little bit more white for me just to make sure that I get it lighter than my wall. And I know that this color will dry a little bit darker when, um, than it is when it's wet. So just as you're mixing your color, you do wanna account for it drying a little bit darker when you get into these grays. That's, that's definitely what happens. So as you're mixing, if you feel that the color is close to your wall color, what you can do is just hold your brush up to your wall itself and make sure that you're at least maybe two or three shades lighter than your wall. That way you definitely have a good um, contrast between the two and you can definitely see it in front of that in front of that back wall. So I think that my color is pretty good the way that I want it. So now that I've got a good color and enough of it, I am going to start painting my window frame. So I've um, chosen to use this smaller flat brush because for me it helps me get some nice clean lines. I'm gonna have a frame down the middle. I'm gonna have one near the left side, near the right side, and then I'll have one horizontally close to the top and horizontally close to the bottom. So I don't wanna overwhelm myself with making a thousand dots and uh, getting too confused as I go through the process. So I'm just gonna go one, one strip at a time. So I'm gonna start the one down on the left-hand side first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from the left about an inch, make myself a dot, then I'll go about another inch make myself another dot. And I'm gonna do the same thing down at the bottom. You could, to make sure that you have them perfectly lined up, is you could use your brush as a measuring tool to make sure that you make the marks at similar places. But I'm pretty confident that I'm, I'm close enough, so I've just made myself two marks. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush on its flat side like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a line all the way down. You can also go to, you know, this can be certainly going down the center. The trick here is you always want to keep your eye on the prize, which is the other, where you're headed, your goal to, to your end mark. So if you tend to let your eyes wander a bit, you'll end up with a really wobbly line. But if you can kind of concentrate and and give yourself that visual reference of watching 
the other line. You can get it pretty straight. I'm not terribly concerned about these being super perfect because I know that I'm gonna have a whole bunch of snow on top of them. So for me having them a little bit on the imperfect side totally works for me. So I'm gonna do this until I've got a nice seemingly symmetrical kind of line but again not terribly concerned if it's uber perfect and these flat brushes really do help to kind of give you some nice almost straight <laughs> lines but again if you want you can whip out a ruler and stuff i just kind of like to go for it on these type of um, paintings i like them to look a little organic and i do have a really shaky hand so you're gonna see me resting my hand on my canvas a lot and we're working next to a straight line which is the edge of your canvas so if you find again that you're really kind of wobbly as you're doing this and you don't want to whip out a, a ruler or anything like that you can watch the edge of your canvas and that really helps to keep you straighter so you can really tackle whatever line you want next i think i'm just going to go do my horizontal one. So again, I'm gonna come down about an inch, make myself a mark, come down about another inch, make myself another mark, do the same thing on the right hand side, come down about an inch, come down about another inch, and those are my, those are my goals. I wanna do a horizontal line. I'm gonna stay in the middle to start, just to get that, that base on there, and I know that I'm kind of staying within the lines as I, as I'm doing it in the middle because it's going to be a little bit wider and then I'll just start to widen it a little bit. I'm watching my top edge of my canvas because that is a straight line that really helps me to to go on the straighter side and these canvases have um, grooves in them that are usually pretty darn straight so if you've got good eyesight <laughs> you can also just watch the grooves in your in your canvas as you're as you're doing these lines so they that will help you to also keep them kind of straight and then I'm going to do my bottom edge of this one so this is one of those steps that might take you you know three hours to do or it might take you three minutes to do it's really all on how perfect your brain wants or needs them to be. I know that for me, again, I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of snow and icicles and my focal point is actually going to be my fireplace and my, you know, the interior of my room. So I know that I, I again, I, I don't need this to be super duper perfect. So I'm just kind of finishing up this one. And then I'm gonna move on to my next one. I think my next one I'm gonna put down at the bottom here. So I'm gonna come up about an inch, then another inch, make my two marks, and then do the same thing on this side, up about an inch and an inch, and there's my two marks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect those two. I have the luxury when I'm doing this bottom one to hold on to my easel. So that's gonna to totally assist me in making a pretty straight line here. And again, straight enough is good enough for me. And you can certainly feel free to alter yours. And if you want yours darker or lighter or, you know, what, whatever, whatever is going to visually work for you. Again, I wanted mine a little bit lighter than my wall. So that way it definitely read as something different and that you could see the contrast with it. And then I'm almost done with this one. And then I've only got two more to go. So again, I'm just really watching the bottom of my canvas because I know that that's a nice straight line and it doesn't have to be super duper perfect. And it looks like I might have gone through a little bit of wet something else. So it's changed the hue of that a little bit, which is no big deal. So the next one I'm going to do is over on the right hand side. I'm going to come in about an inch, make a dot in about another inch, make a dot, go to the bottom, do the same thing. So in about an inch and in about another inch and now i'm going to connect those two dots so i'm going to go something like this something like this and again sometimes the faster you go the less you think about it your hand will kind of you know 
naturally usually know what to do if you if you've given yourself these these markers to kind of follow and you know sometimes if we go slow and that that may make us almost think too much sometimes but you know everybody's brains work different so you can find where your where your comfort zone is where your head meets your hand in a, in a way that they both they both can talk easily to each other that sometimes takes years and years and years to figure out but <laughs> again I'm just kind of working with my markers and um, just going through through this process so you can certainly figure out what what way works best for you and again you can make this whatever color you want if you want yours to be the color of your house feel free to to do that and then I have one more so I kind of saved the most difficult one for last because it's kind of floating in the middle of my canvas so you can certainly break out a ruler or something to help guide you into where to make these markers but I kind of have a convenient thing which is the 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 center of my easel so I get to use that knowing that that is kind of the center of my canvas so I make myself a couple of dots you could always just eyeball wherever you think the center is one side will be easier to mark than the other side because you don't really have something that you can use as a gauge unless you have something longer than this of course you could use a ruler if you wanted to but I'm just gonna mark those two my head's gonna get in the way for a second here because I just want to go directly down from that and then I'm gonna make myself two more markers that are about an inch wide and again I'm just eyeballing it but you could certainly you know break out a ruler if you would like to whatever works for you is totally fine by me and even if it's a little bit off and maybe it's a little bit you know leaning to one side or the other it's going to be okay once you put that snow on it or maybe who you know maybe we're looking at the house from an angle so maybe that provides you with a little bit of an angle on your on your window frame so again we just embrace the little flaws in painting it, it makes it all all the more charming and the more you know natural and homemade and from somebody's hand which is really an excellent thing to to have and to do so that is gonna conclude that little step and we are going to be using our small brush for the next step so once you've got your frame to your window you can put this medium flat brush away you can take out your small brush and get ready for the next step Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are adding the highlight to our window frame. So I'm going to be using my small round brush and I'm going to be using white paint. And really what I'm going to be doing is I'm just adding a line on each one of these um, when window frame pieces that is closest to where my fire is going to go. So my fire is going to be right here. So on every single one of these pieces, I'm going to draw a white line on the side of the fire. So we'll start here because this one is pretty close and simple to think about. I am just making a white line on the bottom edge of this piece. So if you want, you can stay right within that one frame and you can put a white line on the side that the fire is going to be. So this one is going to be the easiest because the white line is going to be all on the inside of, of this window pane or window frame part. So this one, this side is the top side. That's going to be the side of the fire. This one is going to be on the left side because that's the side of the fire. And you just bring it right to the edge of your, of your window frame. It can be along the edge of it. It can be used to straighten out your line a little bit if you need to. But again, if it's not perfect, don't worry because we get to hide it with snow and ice and all that good stuff. So I'm going a little wobbly here. No big deal. And let's see. What one am I want to do next? So 
Maybe I'll just tackle. So this one here, this is this one, so I don't need to do anything to that, but I have these little pieces right here. So the top side of this one is closest to the fire. The bottom side of this one is closest to the fire. I have this little piece here. The right side is closest to the fire. This is this piece, so I don't do anything. This one is the same as here. It's going to be the left side, because that's closest to the fire. So I need to follow this one down. It's going to be the left side at the bottom. That's closest to the fire. So from here over, we're done. We just need this side. So I'm going to tackle this one. The bottom side is the side that's closest to the fire. So I'm just going to put my white line in through there. This piece in through here, the left side is the side that's closest to the fire. So I'm going to put a line there, a line going down here. So right now I have my pinky wrapped around the edge of my canvas. This helps stabilize my shaky hand. <laughs> I don't always have the luxury of doing that, but when I do, I take advantage of it. And I'm using a good amount of paint on my brush. I'm not pressing hard. And I'm just creating a white or a highlighted kind of line. This one right here, the top side is closest to the fire. So that gets a white line here. Then I have going a little rogue on that one. I have this little piece down here. The left side is closest to the fire. This piece here, the top side, is closest to the fire. And then I have that last piece up here, and the bottom part is closest to the fire. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlights on your window frame, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our fireplace. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black paint. I'm having my fireplace in through here. You can make your fireplace as large or as small as you want. Totally up to you. I'm going to keep mine within this frame here. So I'm going to start with just a tall kind of rectangle that it, I want this glowy area to be the center part of my fire or for my fireplace to kind of be in through that area. I'm going to have a mantle on top of it so I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to put decorations on it later but right now I'm just giving myself a black base so then when I put my decorations and all kinds of, you know, of course the fire that's going to go on the inside of it as well. The black is going to really ha have a, or give us a nice base and a nice background to make all of the details of this fireplace pop. So again, yours can be as big or as small. Maybe you want a, an oval fireplace. Maybe you want your mantle to be way bigger than mine. You can really build it whatever way that you want. It is going to look like it's set in the distance because we're going to be doing a table in a minute that will look closer to us. So it's okay if it's small, that's going to make it look a little bit farther away and it'll make your room look bigger. So the smaller your fireplace is off in the distance, that will make the room appear longer and bigger. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step with the same color so you don't have to wash it you can just kind of take a break okay so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the first layer on our table and chairs so i'm going to be doing a table and chairs set for two but you can certainly you could put a couch there you could put a dog sitting by the fireplace you could really do whatever you want this is for me i'm i'm having it mostly look like it's silhouetted because it's going to be a nice dark wintry cozy room so i'm going to again start with black and give it a black base so if you do decide that you want to do a different shape or a different object or something 
you can certainly just use a black base as well. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm doing almost like a, a little cafe style type table to adorn my room. And I wanna give it uh, enough shape and enough size where I can fit both both of my chairs and my table in this window pane and it is ratio wise going to be larger than your fireplace because it's going to be inside the floor of your of your room or closer to us so if yours ends up looking way bigger than your fireplace it's okay because it's just going to make it look like it's closer so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do my tabletop first I'm going to have the top of my table about halfway between my floor where it meets the wall and the top of my fireplace. So somewhere right about here is where I'm going to start my table. I'm going to do a horizontal line and I'm going to save room on the left and the right for my chairs. So I'm only going to take up about half the distance of this, of this area and I'm just making myself a horizontal line that's probably maybe a quarter of an inch to an inch thick and of course your table can be shaped whatever way you want I'm gonna mine's gonna be uh, like a pedestal type table but you maybe you want to have four legs on yours I'm just gonna have a center kind of pedestal for mine but you can have whatever style table that you would like so now that I've got the table top part of it I, and you know what, I think I might make it just a little bit wider, just so we have enough room for all of our, our plates and stuff. So something like that, maybe widen it just a little bit. And again, you can certainly adjust yours as you want. And then I'm going to make a vertical line for the pedestal. Yeah, I'm going to have mine coming about maybe a third to halfway into this space through here. So you want to make sure that it stays straight. You don't want your table to look like it's falling over. So I'm going to try and be pretty darn straight here. And once I get it to as far as I want to go, then I can start decorating it or giving it some shape. So I'm going to give maybe a horizontal line in through here that's going to act as the base to my table. And you just want to make sure that you have pretty equal um, length on the left and on the right to it and then you can start shaping it whatever way you want so I think I'm gonna have mine kind of going something like this and down like that whoops I almost just elbowed my wine off of my little table here and then I'll do the same thing over on this side making it meet somewhere in through there and then down like this and then I'm just gonna color it in black and hopefully it's kind of straight. <laughs> and then once I've got that, I'm gonna put my two chairs on. Yeah, it's almost straight. It's straight enough for me. Maybe I can adjust it if I need to, but I think it works. So my chairs, I'm gonna have, the seats of my chairs are gonna be about halfway between the top of the table and the floor. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a horizontal line to start that comes into my table a little bit here and comes out like that and then I'm going to do a similar line on the other side so about halfway to here and then bring it out past my my table a little bit I'm going to put some legs on my chair and I want my legs to come almost down to the bottom of the pedestal in through here I'll make my seat bigger in a minute I'm just really kind of setting the stage and I'm putting a little bit of a shape to my chair in through here. So you saw I kind of went down a little bit and then maybe in a little bit. And again, yours can be shaped whatever way you want them to be. I'm just giving mine a little bit of maybe a ergonomic type shape to it. But again, you do whatever you want and just try and make one look similar to the other. So I just want to widen this one just a wee bit to make it look similar to the other one. And they're not gonna look exact. So don't, don't labor or don't worry if they don't look exact from one another. And then these back legs, I'm just gonna bring those, you could bring them down straight, you could bring them down at a little bit of an angle, whatever, whatever works for you. Just kind of, if you can make one look similar 
to the other on the other side. So something like this. Maybe just kick it out just a little bit at the bottom. And once I've got those, then I'm going to make my seat. So for me, I'm going to have kind of a big cushy seat, something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, something like that. Now I've got to do the backs of the chairs. So I'm going to take this from the leg and I'm going to go kind of straight up and curve it up into the back. So something like this straight and then just curve it as you want it to obviously be taller than the table with enough with enough height to make sense and then once I've got it on there then I can go ahead and do you know maybe a cushion part to it and again you can you can design yours whatever way you want I think my I think I might need to widen my seat it looks like the legs are a little bit too long too tall for me so I can, I'll show you how I adjust that in a second. So I'm going to make this pretty similar, something like that. Just make sure I've got them similar heights. And then I'm going to give it a big cushy part so it's nice and comfortable to sit on. Something like this. And then, and then I just look at it to say, does this make sense? So to me, my legs look a little bit long. So I can always, uh, my dogs are going crazy again. I can always make this shorter like that, like that. And then if it's still, they still look kind of long, then you can always just make them wider. So making them wider will make them look shorter. So that as long as you widen the seat area too. So you can really, you know, just kind of adjust it until it really feels like it looks proportionate to you. And then once you've got that done, then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can wash and dry it. Let me just make these back legs just as thick so they look like they belong to the front legs. And then I'm going to wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting objects on our table. I'm gonna use my small brush and this is just gonna be the first layer of them just like we did with the table and the fireplace. I'm just gonna do it in black paint and you can put whatever objects on your table you would like. I'm gonna have a wine bottle, a couple wine glasses and some bowl slash plate things, but you can have anything that you'd like and you can have your symmetrical or not symmetrical However your brain works is good by me. So I'm gonna have myself a couple of little plates so or slash bowls. I want you to be able to see them so that's why I'm giving them a little bit of a curve up so they rest on the table and I'll be able to put a little bit of a highlight so you can see them. And I'm gonna do them similar on both sides but I might not get them exactly the same, I'm, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> My brain allows me to, to be imperfect. And then I'm going to put a couple of wine glasses. Maybe they'll look a little bit like goblets because I'm, I'm doing a black kind of base for them, but maybe yours end up nice and see-through. You can totally work yours out as you want to, but again, I'm just going for a nice silhouetted, kind of look to mine and I'm going to try and make it in similar size but it might not work out that way perfectly we're gonna we're gonna go for it and try and make it look a little similar and then I will put my wine bottle on and my wine bottle is going to be taller than my wine glasses and I'm trying to put them in a you know proper size proportion but you can see you know I'm going I'm going to do a nice straight line just to give myself or semi straight line to give myself a starting point and then I just kind of bump it out a little bit at the top for the neck of the wine bottle and then just bring it down a little bit in through here trying to get both sides to look pretty similar to one another and that is all I'm going to be putting on my table. I will be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your objects on your table, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the glow in our fireplace. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using yellow and red. And how I'm gonna do this, when I do it, I'm gonna keep in mind that I have a mantle that I don't need a glow on and I have, I'm have i gonna have two edges to my fireplace that I don't need a glow on. So if you, if you accidentally get some on there, no worries. But I'm putting a little bit of yellow on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm rubbing it in because I know that my yellow is see-through and that when it dries, it's gonna be a lot darker because it's on top of the black and it's going to have a glowy type look. So I've got the yellow on there. Now I'm putting a touch of red and it, you can see the, I don't know if you can detect this, but the yellow looks a little green because it is on top of the black and then the red is going to neutralize that a little bit, put some orange type hues in it and you can put as much red as you want. It doesn't have to be uniform throughout the entire fireplace. Maybe some areas are redder than others. Maybe some areas are more yellow than others. And you can, again, make your glow as bright as you want it to be. I am making mine pretty darn bright because I want to have a, a nice area for my for my fire but I am gonna leave a little darkness around some of the edges but again this paint is see-through so you're gonna have light spots and dark spots yeah that looks pretty good and that's all I'm gonna do for that so I am gonna use a small brush for the next step so you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step okay so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am going to be decorating my mantle so you might want to have all kinds of decorations. You might want to have stuff on top of your mantle. You might want to have wreaths or stockings or stuff hanging from your mantle. I'm just going to go for a kind of a simple contemporary looking fireplace with some scroll marks in it but you can certainly have yours as fancy or as simple as you want. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white are gonna be the colors that I use. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm actually putting all three colors on my brush at the same time. I'm not gonna pre-mix them. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of each color on at the same time because I'm gonna almost outline some of my sections to my fireplace so I have kind of a starting point. So I've got those three colors on my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of give myself a kind of a highlight at the bottom edge of the mantle. I'm reloading with those three colors so I can give myself kind of an edge where it's gonna meet my fireplace. I'm gonna do the same thing over on that side. And then now, that I have it outlined and I know where those edges are. Now I'm just gonna kind of freeform whatever decorative elements I want. So again, I'm using brown, black, and white, but brown is gonna be a pretty, brown and white are gonna be pretty dominating colors for me. And then when I get done the whole thing, I might put some little black accents or, or super white highlights. So I just really outlined again the inside and the outside. Now maybe I'll make this, you know, decorative type decoration in the middle and maybe I'll put a couple of swirly marks over going like this. And maybe these are embellished, maybe they are carved into the wood or the marble or whatever you are imagining yours to be. But I'm gonna try and get them pretty symmetrical from one side to the other, but that's not a, a, a necessary thing. You just really can have some fun with however you want it to, to look. I'm adding a little bit more brown just to get some some warmth into it. And then once I've got my decorations the way that I want, then I pick up a touch of white and just add these little bits of highlights here and there to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And you have fun with this. You make it look as decorative. Maybe yours ends up looking like there's garland down the sides or flowers or you put candles on the top. Whatever you want to do to decorate your 
uh, fireplace, you feel free to do so. I might highlight this bottom edge just a little bit because it might be a little bit more glowy with that fire that we're going to be putting on in a minute. And then let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We are going to be, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your fireplace nice and decorated, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the highlights to our table and chairs and little stuff on top of our table and chairs. So the colors I'm gonna be using are red, yellow, and white, and I'm gonna be using my small brush, and I'm gonna be using all three of those colors at the same time. So I'm gonna have varying shades of these highlights. Some spots are gonna be brighter than others, and it's gonna make it look oh, really nice and natural. So I'm gonna put yellow, red, and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna just put kind of like a streak down the side that's closest to the fire. So I have red, yellow, and white on my brush right now. And I'm putting a streak down that particular object on the side that is closest to the fire, similar to what we did on the window panes. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And every time I reload my brush, I'm reloading with those three colors so that way it's going to provide those different tones throughout the, throughout the highlights. So I'm gonna add a little highlight on the edge of my table there, on the left side here, just reloading my brush with those three colors, maybe, maybe a little bit in through there. And if you go to pink, let's say you notice you have a pink highlight, that means you have just red and white. So you might wanna add a little bit of yellow to it if you're not enjoying the pinkness of it. And then I'm gonna do a little one here, 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 here. Reload with a little bit of those colors, red, yellow, white. And you can see I'm just kinda of cruising along, getting this, these pops of highlights on the side where the fireplace is. So this is gonna be a long the edge of here. And if you can't see it good enough, that means you need a little bit of white in your in your color combination. So, and sometimes when it dries, it'll get a little bit darker. So you might add a little extra pop of white. And that's looking pretty good to me. So I am going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlight on your chairs, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the shadow on the floor from our table and chairs. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. If your floor is on the lighter side, you could certainly use maybe a little bit of brown and black, but I'm gonna be using uh, black paint. My light source is my fireplace, so my shadow has to go in the direction of wherever that fireplace is. So my shadows are gonna be going off to the right. So I'm just gonna take from the bottom of each object and I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of a shadow. This shadow would probably go on the other side of my window pane. So I've got that, I've got this leg in through here. We're gonna pretend that the seat shadow just happens to be right behind that that window frame so we don't have to contend with it. This one, I'm gonna go in this direction. And I don't really wanna lose the bottom's edge of my, um, my object, so I'm not going to, I might leave a little tiny space between the shadow and that particular object. And I'm just bringing this out in this direction. And maybe the, the top of my table maybe comes in through here, but I don't really need much. I know I'm gonna have a lot of snow in this corner, so I'm not really concerned about that too much. And then this one is gonna come off in this direction, something like this. And again, I'm not using a ton of paint, and I really just wanna give the impression that this is the um, same object. I know that the, the back of the seat is something like this, so I'm gonna bring the seat in through here and then bring the top of the chair, something like that. And again, doesn't have to be super duper perfect. You're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff on your window that's gonna disguise it anyways. So as long as you've got 
something representational, you should be good. And then we're gonna use a small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. Okay, so what we're gonna do for this step is we're putting the fire in our fireplace. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, red, and yellow. And if you want, you could also use blue because there are blue flames, but it's gotta be super duper hot to have some blue flames. So I, I, I might use it, I'm not quite sure, but right now I'm gonna start with black and white and I'm gonna put like the little grill that the wood is gonna sit on. So I start with black, I'm just putting a, a horizontal line, maybe a couple of legs on it. Then I'm gonna put a touch of white on my brush just to add a touch of a highlight to it. Then if you want, you can wipe your brush off on your paper towel. Maybe you put a couple of pieces of wood almost like crisscrossing down at the bottom just with a little bit of black. And then you get to start making your flames. I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up some red and start making my flames. So one big key to doing flames in a fire, you don't want them to all shoot straight up or straight out from one spot. You want it to almost have like a base, a round base at the bottom, and then almost little, almost like an hourglass type shape at the bottom and then it gets more narrow and then kind of shoots out. If it shoots straight from one spot, it's gonna look like a little rocket or a volcano type movement to it. So you definitely want it to almost be wider at the base and have little pieces coming out here and there. I haven't used white yet in my flame because I wanna make sure that the yellow and the red are really represented in true form and not take up, but not have um, softness put into them with the, the white itself. And you can have little ones that are shooting up into the flue of the chimney. But once I've got it pretty well stable and looking the, in the form that I want, then I can pick up a touch of white and start adding these brighter little sparks going through it. But again, I don't want it to all look like it's going straight up. So you definitely want to have some movement to it and having those little curved kind of pieces helps to do that. And having little sparks coming out here and there, that really helps to tell the story as well. And if it's too bright, you can always wipe your brush off, pick up a little bit of black and add some little black marks in through there. That will help to tone it down and make it look really nice and natural. So, cause there's really, you know, there's those dark spot, spots in there too. So feel free to make this as dimensional as you want. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're actually gonna switch brushes to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your flames all nice and flickering in your fireplace, you can put the small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the frost on our windows. So I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using white and blue paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make a light blue color so it looks really, really cold. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my white paint and I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue into it and I'm gonna mix it around. And if you're nervous about the blue, you can always make it into like a light gray. You could add a touch of black to it, but I'm just making mine a very pale blue. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I wipe it off on the side of my palette. So I have very little bit of paint on my brush. And if you're afraid that you have too much paint, you can always just kind of give it a dab on your paper towel. So we're gonna do what I refer to as like a dry brush technique. And I want my frost on my windows to kind of go around my edges. So I also know that I'm gonna have snow piling up around my, my frame of my window too. So if I go heavy on my frost, it's okay, especially in the corners or around the edges because you're gonna, you can disguise it with a little bit of your snow anyways. So 
when I start, I'm going to start down here in the bottom left hand corner because if I've got a lot of paint on my brush, it's okay because I know I'm going to have a lot of snow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of rub it onto my um, canvas. I feel like I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to just almost rub it into my canvas so it's really, really see-through. And if you want to, you can also add a tiny bit of water to your brush. So if you're feeling like it's not rubbing the way that you want it or it's not see-through enough, you can add a tiny bit of water to your brush and that's gonna make it more see-through. So I'm gonna do this. I want it to almost fade into my wall. So you can see this is looking pretty good. It's nice and light, but I can still see some of my, um, my frame, I can still see through it and see my, my window itself and my fireplace. And you can get this to be as frosty as you want or as, you know, non-frosty, whatever works for you. But the idea here is to get it so it's kind of see-through. So that's why I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush. I'm almost just kind of letting it run out of paint as I'm getting towards the interior of the window. But I need more paint, so I'm gonna pick up just a teeny tiny bit, wipe it off on my paper towel, start in one of these corners where it's gonna be the safest to start. And then if I want, I can add a touch of water to my brush. I know that when I have water and white paint, I know that there's white in this mixture, it will be brighter or whiter when it's wet. So I'm not really too scared right now that it's on the lighter side because I know it's gonna dry a little bit darker and more see-through once that water dries. And then I'm just gonna bring it on up. You can cross over your, your furniture a little bit if you want. Bring it into these corners. Just rub it into the, the actual window itself. I'm running out of paint, so here I go, adding just a touch more to my brush. I'm gonna put some down in this right-hand corner. And then again, maybe just a tiny touch of water to make sure that it's nice and thin and can just really be nice and see-through. And if you go too heavy, if your paint is dry enough underneath, you could always just add a little bit more water to your brush and that will help to remove some of it if you've got too, too much on there. But you know, there's never too much frost. You can have as much as you want. It can be as light and as cold looking as you want. The more frost on your windows, the, the more wintry it's gonna look. So you have fun with your intensity on your frost. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I've got it nice along each window. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your frost on, you can, you don't even have to wash it. Just kind of take a break and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the first layer on our piled up snow that has accumulated around our window. So I'm gonna use a darker shade of snow as my first layer. So that way when I put my white fluffy stuff, the final layer on it, I want it to look three dimensional. So in order for it to look three dimensional, I've gotta have kind of a little bit darker of a, of a first layer on there. So I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna use some of that blue, light blue color that I have, and maybe a little bit of my tan color. So I'm gonna just take my big brush and add that little tan color into there. You might want yours a little bit darker. If you do, just add a touch more blue to it. Maybe you want yours on the grayer side. Really just something that's a little bit darker than white. And if it has a little bit of blue in it, that's gonna make it look nice and cold. So I need a little bit more here because I know I, I've got a bunch of snow that I wanna put on there. So I'm just kind of mixing it up here. And I know from experience living in the middle of a snow covered land that when the snow uh, accumulates on the edge of the windows, it kind of can creep up the corners or the sides of them. So I want this to look pretty natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be applying my paint in like a dotting technique. I'm gonna have it 
piled up some of these sides, maybe dripping over. I am going to have icicles too at some point. So this is just kind of the start of this the start of my snow story. So I've got a little bit in through there. I'll put some in here. And when I'm doing this, I want to be careful that I don't paint over all of my frost on my windows. So we put that there for a reason. So I don't want to, I don't want to cover it all up with a whole bunch of piled up snow in through here. So I am just kind of adding some of these areas in the corners. I want to make sure that I don't take away from my focal points of the painting. So just be, you can do this slowly, just be kind of strategic with where you're placing it. Maybe I've got some, maybe there's a little bit from a, a window down below that has, you know, piled up along here or something or cast, you know, fallen over there. Just, you know, enjoy the process. Get some snow where you want to. I'm going to put some up on this upper little ledge here and for me the snow would sit on the top of these ledges and then maybe crawl up those little corners a, a little bit I, so I'm not going to really put snow at the bottom of here because I don't feel that it would sit there I feel like it would sit at the top of those little ledges on the on the picture frame or on the window frame so that's kind of where I'm putting mine you can feel free to to put yours where, wherever you want you can see some of it is you kind of billowing over the sides a little bit and then I am going to actually switch brushes to my medium uh, nope I'm going to go with my small round brush for the next step so once you've got your first layer of your snow on here you can put maybe this is going to come down here a little bit maybe that's a, a big pile of snow uh, you can put this large brush away take out your small round brush and get ready for the next step okay so what we're going to do for the next step is we're making some beautiful icicles. So I'm going to use my small round brush and I'm going to be using that darker snow color that we used plus white. So it's kind of like my dirty snow color, like a light bluish grayish kind of color. And I'll also use white. So I'm going to do my first layer of my icicles with this color. So for me, they're going to come off whatever is up here and maybe hang off of here. I suppose you could put some down here too, but you wouldn't really be able to see the bottom of them, so it might not, it might just be more work than it's worth. So you could certainly put some down there if you want to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some up here. You can have them really thick. You can have them really thin if you want to. If you want to see through them like ice icicles, you can make them so they are see-through. So with a little bit of water on your brush, you can certainly make them have a little bit of, tra of, of that translucency to them. You can have them in all different lengths. So maybe I've got one coming off here. They, I like to have them nice and pointy at the ends. You could certainly have yours whatever way that you want. I know I'm also going to have snow up here. So have as it, them coming, maybe this one comes off from this little snow pile here. Maybe this is a really long one. Maybe this one has some of that translucency to it. So I just put some water on my brush so I can almost see through part of it. So have fun with it. If you want there, it to look like real icicles and have look almost like glass, being able to see through it will definitely help you. Maybe I've got a couple in through here. Maybe this one is short. Maybe, maybe it's got two little pieces coming off of it you can have fun. They can really be any kind of shape that you want them to me. I think I'm going to have this one kind of wide and maybe this one's going to break off or come in these two. They can be a little wiggly if you want them to be. Maybe this one's got little, I don't know how that would happen. Oh yeah, I guess if it melts, it can then just kind of break off into different places. But you can see I'm just kind of freeforming this, having, having a whole bunch of fun. Maybe this one is going to be thick in the corner here. Maybe there's a little crunchy one over here. Crunchy one. I don't know if 
that's the right terminology to use for icicles. I guess they would crunch under your feet if you stepped on them, but that's looking pretty good for the formation of them. Now, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just picking up some white paint, and this is gonna add like these little pops of bright highlights to them. Oops, there goes my brush. Let me get, let me go pick that up. So just adding a touch of white. Sometimes when I get excited about these steps, my, my brush seems to do its own thing. So really I'm just kind of streaking a little bit of white down part of these icicles and it gives it a real three dimensional look to it. And if you wanted to, you could always add a little bit more darkness to them if they're not looking as three dimensional as you want them to. But sometimes just adding these little these little pops of white streaks, like they're glimmering in the in the maybe the moonlight from the sky or something, and it's casting this beautiful little twinkly highlight to them. The icicles are just shimmering. Maybe they're, maybe they're getting bits of the fireplace glow on them and they're really just taking on some, some beautiful life here. And then once you've got your icicles as icy and as beautiful as you want them to be, we are going to be switching back to that large brush. So I'm just getting, I want this one to really be evident here. Yeah, that looks good. And then we're gonna switch brushes back to that large brush, if I can ever stop doing my icicles here. I think that's good. Yeah, that's pretty. That's it, so large brush, get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the highlighted or the bright snow on onto our window. So I'm gonna use my large brush and I'm gonna use white paint. So my thought process is that I, I want my snow to look three dimensional, so I'm not gonna cover up all of the darker snow that I had in place. I'm just gonna put little, little pops of, of the white fluffy stuff on top of it. So I'm gonna use my large brush and I'm just using white paint and I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush the end of my brush to pop in this more textured looking snow. So you don't have to do the entire, the entire area. You can almost do little bumps for it. So I've got like a light spot here and then I've left some of that blue underneath. So maybe I'll bring some going up this side where this snow had accumulated up the side of the of the window, same thing with in through here. So I'm not covering that original dark snow color 100%. I'm really just adding these little pops of, of highlights or fluffier stuff, especially at the top of it, and then maybe a little bit in through the middle of it just to show that it's got some, some form and, and, and texture to it. And you can see it's really coming to life. It's looking three-dimensional. If you want, you can even creep it up the side of the window a little bit more. If you feel like it's not full enough, you can certainly add the, those extra white pieces even in an area outside of your original footprint for the, for the snow itself. Yeah, this is looking, this is looking cold. It's looking like Santa's ready to come and deliver, come slide, no, he can't come sliding down the chimney because there's a fire in it, but he has magic. Maybe he can slide down it whether there's fire in it or not. But it could be, you know, you and your, your significant other are having a nice romantic fireside dinner and you know, the snow has just fallen outside and it's just, giving you this beautiful cozy feel. Up here, I am gonna add same idea. It's still gonna be a little bit whiter at the top, but I might bring some of this down even further as it comes down, down that window. I might put some in front of one of my icicles. So, you know, have fun with adding these little pops of of the white stuff, of the fluffy stuff on top of your original color. And if you feel like you've gone too far, like you've brought, too much of this bright white into this, you can always bring back some of that original darker color, or you could mix the two. So maybe you want something that's got a little bit 
of a, of a medium tone to it. So you could always take that white and mix it with that original gray. And now you've got like a medium tone to it. So feel free to, to tweak it and have fun with the intensity of your bright white snow. But I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna put just a little bit more creeping up these, these edges of my window, making sure it really reads as being super cold and super snowy and a beautiful winter winter wonderland inside from the comfortable warmth of your own fireplace which is where i think most of us want to be on a nice on a, on a freezing cold day so that we have one tiny little step left to go so once you've got all of your fluffy snow on here you can put this big brush away in your water cup and or wherever you want take out your tiny brush and get ready for the next step Okay, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you want is totally fine by me. And that, is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful, cozy little winter oasis, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>